Guys, welcome to today's video where I'm gonna be solving a problem that I've been wondering how I'm gonna solve for a little bit of time now. So currently I have this old switch panel that I no longer use because I have the Oxbeam 8 gang switch panel. And so I control all my electronics from here. I no longer need these two. And I was looking for block off plates or little things on eBay where you can plug them. But if you look around the edges of my wood panel here, they're kind of not in the best shape and it's looking like that piece would need to be replaced anyway so i reached out to blue dog design works and they have some fantastic products for the lexus gx470 platform on their website definitely go ahead and check them out one of the newest ones that just dropped is a replacement transfer case shift lever panel so this is how it looks. It has a nice cup holder that can fit a large Nalgene bottle and it has room for a downhill assist control button if you want, but it deletes the ride control, which most of us with modified GX470s don't have any need for. So I'm looking forward to getting rid of that this switch panel and all the wires that I know are underneath here and replacing it with something a lot more functional and frankly, a lot better looking. Let's get into it. All right, so first of all, make sure you have some plastic tools. These are meant for working on interiors, you guys. So make sure that you have things like this that help you remove your interior pieces safely without breaking them. And to begin with, we're gonna lift up here. Uh, you might wanna move your this seat back a little bit more, but I know that I can kind of sneak this under here and I should be able to get it up, no problem. And you're pulling up towards the sky on this guy hold it in place and get the harder side of the tool there let's see there you go and it pops up like that so once you got it popped up just pull straight up towards the sky and it should come out of the front there as well that's how it pops out so keep that guy in a safe place and let's move on to the other side all right so next up we're gonna remove this side so same thing and this side might be a bit easier. Just sneak the plastic tool straight under there and work it around a little bit. If this is your first time removing these interior pieces, it may be a bit more uh, difficult. Have to break some grime free and stuff. Once you get that out, just pull straight up on it and then you'll see how it comes out of there. I'm just gonna pull up and then should come out just like that. And if you don't follow this video, Blue Dog Design Works ships every kit with these really nice in-depth color photo instructions that kind of show you how to do everything. So we've done most of this already and we're just gonna continue on to the next steps. Now we're just gonna remove both the transmission shift knob and the transfer case shift knob. You do that just by unscrewing them. And if you hold this ring, looks like the transmission shift knob can spin independently. All right, so we've unscrewed it. The instructions say that it's fine to leave it like this attached to the shift boot as long as it's disconnected from the actual shift shaft. Not so with the transfer case knob. So let's break that loose and take it off. And there you go. Simple as that. Let's move on to the next step. So the next step may be different for you guys because I have this uh, aftermarket cup holder. And I think in the near future, I wanna switch to a Blue Dog Design Works cup holder. But anyways, you're basically going to pry up around here until it pops up. And then you're going to lift up the center console and then remove this whole, this whole piece right here. My cup holder just pops out like this. Yours may uh, require a bit more work so then of course just gonna pull up around here so it attaches down here there's you can see the seam right here it goes all the way around to here and along here and around the side of the parking brake there so let's pop it up very gently of course this is plastic so you need to be careful and this is a great time to use one of the metal tools in this kit since it's not in danger of scratching anything on the surface level. So you wanna find where the clip is, pop up on it, just like that. All right, nice and easy. Don't force it at all. Just work your way around it and take your time. 
Awesome. Now I'm just unzipping the boot on the parking brake. All right, getting that out of the way in preparation for our next steps, which is of course gonna be going underneath the center console here and finding where our harness connections are. And I think I feel it right here. Here is your electronic connector. So you're just going to press in here and remove this. And as you pull this up, actually, it's a great time to clean out all the grime that can accumulate on the shift boots. I just got some baby wipes. So I'm gonna make sure I get everything out of there. I was actually able to bring this up a little bit more so I could get to more of the harness disconnect here. It kind of looks like it plugs in like that. And yeah, I know there's a ton of gross stuff in here. When your previous owner spills coffee all over the place and whatnot, it doesn't go anywhere. When it's plugged in, the way that I found worked, get yourself a rigid piece of metal, press in on the tab that we talked about before, and get a piece of metal in this area right here, top of the plug right there. I'm not gonna plug it back in, so, but just imagine, uh, this is a bit closer to here, but that shouldn't matter. Just put your rigid piece of metal up here, press down on that, and then push down, push down with your piece of metal there, whatever metal tool that you have, like this, and then that will allow it to come out like that. So I'm pressing in with my finger here on the tab, and then at the same time, I push down like that. So we should be able to pop the assembly up once we've removed the harness there. And I had to temporarily remove this Ohana rig supply mount, uh, but that's okay. Just get some new of that 3M double-sided tape. Go right back in. If you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out here. The reason I need to do that is because there's some some clips along here should be three or so up here that we need to pop up and out. And that's the last piece of this puzzle. There we go. Okay, okay. There it is, people. This is what the bottom looks like. All right, and I think this is the ride control that it disconnected, and these are all the wires. I need to rip the heck out of here because I no longer need them. Like I said before, I have the switch panel taking care of all of that. So all this can go. Really excited about this. Here's a kind of a shot of what it looks like under here. This is the difficult harness that we were working with earlier, and that just plugs in right there taking out all these wires from the back side here then we should be able to just pop this guy on out okay cool and this should be real satisfying for me. Junk out of here. So I'm gonna clean up in here a little bit while I'm in here, as the saying goes, and then we'll move on. Let's get into removing this old wood piece. And if you didn't see it before, that's what I meant by all sorts of chipping and cracking and all that not so good stuff. So I'm just going to start out by removing this screw right here. Just make sure I don't lose that. And then on the back side, you have another series of screws. And it's just this one down here, uh, this one right here, and then this, uh, these other two up there. And I think the rest of it is just, yeah, the rest of it's just held in with these tabs. Once these four screws are removed, 
and carefully too because you don't want to drop it down in your transmission tunnel do not think you would get that back so hopefully you still have your cup holder there just remove my downhill assist control button which is done by just pressing in these two tabs and the button should pop through there it goes here i'm just going to press in and remove the harness connection so i'm going to save this uh, for later when we install the new piece I think all I have to do is disconnect this piece from this rib on the back of the wood panel. And it's just as easy as that. That metal tool definitely helped. So we should be able to just remove it. And we're free. Now let's check out how the new one looks. And this one will go in just like this. First, of course, we need to transfer over our transfer case shift boot. And to do that, just kind of pull in on these tabs. And once you have this side free, you should be able to pull it out just like that. And on the other piece, it's gonna be just the opposite. And then the opposite would just be pressing it in this side and snapping it in to these tabs on that side. Looks like there's some kind of metal wire inside of here that you can push on and then it just goes into place like that. And likewise up here should be able to just work it in. Nice, nice. Fantastic fitment. Very impressed with that. All right, so I had to kind of go back through and make sure that both sides of the uh, kind of stiff part that surrounds the shift boot make it all the way up to the top here and as you can see after doing that no fitment issues at all presses right in just like that and these tabs again you kind of push it in this way and hook it in here and then you just kind of bend it in and then let it snap itself under these tabs we have some tabs on the bottom here over here okay so you just kind of put the bottom in here to begin with then you put the front part in now let's see if this will be a good test of how quality this 3d print was all right guys check it out very snug but very accurate fit there now i just gotta screw it in so let's get started Okay guys, and there it is. Looks super awesome, fits very tight you guys. So just keep that in mind. Um, you're not gonna be easily screwing this in. You'll notice when you get the unit, you can't really 3D print uh, screw threads. So what you have to do is like you saw me doing, press really hard on it uh, while you're screwing in these screws. So you really need to provide a good amount of backing force on them and really push in on them. And another thing, make sure that you have a screw bit that fills out as much of the Phillips cutouts from for the screws as possible to make sure you get the maximum amount of leverage. I switched to this bit from another skinnier bit that I had on there before, just because I knew that I wasn't getting enough uh, force on these before it started to kind of slip out of them. Give it a good push, uh, make sure that it all fits in and uh, you're gonna have to back it you're gonna have to make your own threads basically because you know it's just chewing into the 3d print but i've found that actually fits extremely well let's put everything back together starting with our harness here for this all we'll really need to do is get our downhill assist control uh, blue connector through here so let's start with that and just to note, I tucked this thing in, which is for the ride control, uh, into this harness so it doesn't touch against the side of the cup holder because that would be really annoying if that plastic was like scraping against there. So grab my downhill assist control button, make sure I get it right side up, feed it through here, and let's see how good the fit is. Perfect. That's a great fit. And I just gotta plug this guy in. All right, and here we go. So 
I'm going to start with these front three clips. Just press them straight down towards the ground. Okay. And then we're going to work our way back here. Toss these guys back in like that put this top end in first and then push kind of forward and down and the same thing on the other side just put this side up and in push forward and down at the same time all right now i'm just going to finish putting transmission shift lever on and the transfer case shift lever on That is so much nicer, you guys. The interior is really coming together on this car. I'm excited about that. This is so nice because I only have like large bottles and have like, like it doesn't quite fit in here. And this is like the perfect size for it. So I'm really looking forward to using that. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and check out Blue Dog Design Works. They have a lot of awesome 3D printed parts for the Lexus GX470 platform. And I always think it's a great idea to support companies who support our platform. Let me know if you have any questions on the install in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.